This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. Are you looking for sealed product and singles? You can find it all on Channel Fireball. Please use my Teomon affiliate code when checking out to help support my content. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. If you're from Europe, Millipods Gaming has a wide array of sealed products, singles and more. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. Want to show off your love for Tailmon? Check out my 2021 merch. These new hoodies and shirts are available on Amazon. Click on the link in the description to get yours. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. We're gonna start our coverage and I'm gonna try to have this video out every Monday with a coverage of what happened the past weekend with the Tailmon Challenge tournaments, all right? So season two has started of the Sword and Shield online tournaments hosted by myself, sponsored by Photon Store, and challenge number one just took place this past Friday with the new battle style set being legal and look at how much the metagame has um, been affected, right? We have Station still as the most popular deck, but not by a lot. We had Rapid Striker Shivu being played quite a bit. We had Dragapult as well being really, really popular along with Cinderace, Single Strike Urshifu, so we can see the immediate impact of Battle Styles along with Victini, Dragapult Urshifu, Intellion, Corviknight, so we can see a ton of influence from Battle Styles. There were over 100 participants in this first tournament. There were Eternatus decks, Colossal, Toke, so, so much VMAXs, right? Other than Station, there's VMAX, 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 maybe VMAX, VMAX, <laughs> yeah, so even Salamence, Lapras, or Beetle, yeah, so a ton, a ton of variety right here in the metagame, and at the end of the day, the top performers were Toekiss, Victini, Dragapult, Intillion, Single Strike or Shifu did better than Rapid Strike or Shifu, and Toekiss once again. These were the decks in the top eight. We can go down. Yes. We can go down to um, the rest of the decks. We have Intillion, Cinderace doing well. Uh, the highest placed station, which was the dominant deck um, last season, was. Um, this Mexican player, Lucky Blounds, one of my students, in fact, 14th place. So you can see the impact, right, between the novelty of the brand new set and people wanting to try new cards. Victini probably keeping some Station decks in check, along with a lot of the new cool decks that we're about to see, right? The Single Salamence also did pretty well top 32. All of these players, or most of these players up to top 32, earned uh, chair points for the official ranking of this um, Tailman challenges, which will grant a day to invite. If you are not um, understanding a lot of what I'm saying, you should definitely check out the video linked in the description down below. And if you want to register for the number two tournament and start accumulating your own chair points, you can do so as well in the link down below in the description. Anyways, let's take a look at the top performing decks, which were very, very interesting. The number one deck played by Shun Ito was Togekiss VMAX with Bronzong. Yeah, definitely not a very um, easy to predict deck, but obviously Togekiss VMAX, high HP, um, and with the attacks, with the attack max flight, you can search your deck for any two cards you want. So it allows you to get the Cheryls into your hand, allows you to set up the Bronze Song. Have a, you can utilize Capture Energy as well to help with your consistency. And the Bronze Song's Metal Transfer ability makes the Cheryls super good and super impactful in this non one KO, um, two hit KO format. Along with giving you the versatility of Station and Samacenta to make sure that you are setting up and having alternate attackers to Togus VMAX for extra damage. Togus VMAX's free retreat also synergizes really nicely with Station. You can go hit for 120, retreat, attack into Station, and that really sets up every KO that you could possibly want. 
ton of consistency with Marnie, research um, the four Cheryls, double Palpat as well to make sure that you get even more Cheryls throughout the course of the game. And you can probably just out heal a lot of your opponents this way. So a really cool deck that I'm sure we're gonna see more of and being more popular in the upcoming Tableland Challenge number two. Now, in second place, we got Victini VMAX. I fully expected this deck to do really, really well, mostly because everything is V now, right? In Sword and Shield onwards, whereas Victini in current standard format uh, fails miserably against things like Picron, right, overall because you do 100 damage and that's definitely not worth it for a three price Pokemon. But in the Sword and Shield format, there's no more GXs, it's all these, and so you're always doing a ton, a ton of damage. Um, this player, whose name is Javier from Chile, combined Victini with Sinchino, which gives him an extra way to find resources, um, takes away from the having to rely all the time on research or Marnie to draw cards. However, looking at this, I feel like um, there would be merit to playing a little bit more variety <clears throat> in terms of the supporters and whatnot. Um, just because you have extra access to cards with Sinchino, so maybe like Payday, maybe um, Hyper Potions, things like that, right? That you wouldn't normally be able to super rely on. Um, Sinchino does act as extra draw power, so being able to find that would be super sweet. But it's a hyper consistent deck, right? With the supporters, the Cricket Toon V, the Crobats, and the Sinchino line. Now, we also have the two Dragon Ball decks that did pretty well. They're both um, a little different overall, uh, but Dragon Ball VMAX is, of course, the focus so that you can shred past any Pokemon that are annoying you, but Max Phantom allowing you to play damage counters on the bench, along with dealing a good amount of damage to the active is really, really nice. Has the energy disruption and Crush Hammer, has the Mimikyu to prevent healing as well, and even has the Mimikyu V to buy yourself that very, very crucial turn, along with Fan of Waves, Tool Jammer, so a very disruptive version of Dragapult played by Kevin R from France. And in spot number four, we have pretty cool Noichi, who has done like amazingly well in the Sword and Shield onwards run. I feel like I, I give him prize packs in every single one. And um, he focused on Dragapult a little less teched out and has the mana fee to help it set up and help him find the Pokemon that he needs. He even has the suspicious foot tin to be able to heal. Has the Rose Engine combined with Krigatoon, right? So that's really nice. You can suspicious foot tin hit heal your Dragapult V Max and then power up again through Rose and fill up your hand again with Krigatoon. So a lot of synergy right there. I really really like that extra damage counters with Six Sigun as well. So pretty interesting to see a Rose deck do really well in this current uh, certain shield on format, which now with seven setters a lot more room for um, originality, new archetypes to come out. Um, as we see with Intillion, right? Intillion VMAX barely saw any play in the previous iterations of the Tailwind challenges, but now we are seeing it being played with Frostmoth and the full Intillion line that we did see being played with the CDI last season. Now we're seeing Intillion being included in a lot more decks, even in current standard, which I really like. I do feel like Intillion is definitely underrated as being able to search for any trainer that you want is really cool. And then you have the Yell Grunts, the Crush Hammers, and the Disruption with the first attack of Intel and VMAX to really destroy potential energies. And you have Telescopic Side to target the bench, you have Cricket Tune for recovery, you have the Level Balls and the Quick Balls which allow you to set up your Drizzles and your Frostmoth as well. And we have of course the Researches and Marnies and um, our energies to power up. So really cool deck right here really really cool deck and then we have the two single strike oh sorry this deck was played by um, Daniel Tavila Dax PTCG um, into the top eight and then we have um, Angel Aranivar from Peru yeah he's also like a mainstay of the Sword Shield Onwards tournaments he's won more than one uh, of the challenges in season one and I'm always giving him price cards I mean price codes and single strike or Shifu VMAX, really powerful, straightforward deck. Um, you just want to set up and get those handums going, recover the energies with the urn, get the single strike energies attached and take one shots very, very easily, right? So the only Pokemon you don't one shot is, well, actually you can one shot everything in this current format, as long as you have your single strike energies. And he even has the two Tarant RVs to cover for the Psychic Weakness against Dragapult VMAX, so really nice deck. 
just strong, powerful, big attacks for Angel. And then we have um, Befino, not sure which country he's from, with another single strike uh, Orshifu VMAX deck. Very, very similar. Does have a little bit of more variety with the Pokemon Breeders nurturing, allowing him to search for the evolution Pokemon much more easily. He also has a Cheryl to potentially heal. He has extra counts of the Tower of Darkness and only one Tyranitar to cover against the Dragapult. I Let me check the bracket. Maybe both single strike Urshifus faced off against Dragapult. One, uh, Pretty Koinuchi did fall to Dragapult and Angel did fall to. Um, sorry, the Fino fell to Pretty Koinuchi with Dragapult and Angel fell to the Victini VMAX player. So still pretty cool decks to see make top cut uh, single strike being more successful than rapid strike in this first challenge. And then at spot number eight, we have another um, Toekis Bronze Song deck, which is really cool to see by Caleb Rogerson. He's a senior um, player, very similar to the other list. Less Cheryl, less ball bat, a little bit more disruption with a yell grunt and the fan of wave to delay an opponent's attack. And also with the recovery, thanks to Metal Saucer. So similar, I mean, different builds, same strategy of attacking with Togekiss, getting the cards you need into your hand, and then being able to abuse Bronze Song's metal transfer ability that isn't limited to only metal Pokemon, and being able to fully heal any damage that your opponent might have dealt to you. So Togekiss, Bronze Song, apparently a very powerful and newcomer to this Sword and Shield metagame. I'm really excited to see what will happen in week two. The tournament will be taking place this Saturday, April 3rd. All right, so if you want to participate, it is my tournament series. It is sponsored by Poton Store. Um, they are providing the prizes and it's really fun. Yeah, I definitely think from the game time I've been able to see, it's definitely more fun than current standard. And if all goes well, I'm gonna be playing the Sword and Shield for onwards format on Twitch in viewer battles, okay, if everything goes well. So hopefully I can do that. Otherwise, you can um, ask for games in my Discord server. There's not a lot of activity, but if a lot of people start joining and asking for games, I'm sure we could get a lot more interest in this format going. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this recap of Tailwind Challenge number one, and I hope to see a lot of you play in Tailwind Challenge number two. Remember, you can just register down below. See you there.